morning, let us lift up his name, for he's worthy to be praised. If you know that he's worthy to be praised, I need you to drop that down in the chat box this morning as we sing this song. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. He's worth 
join in with our praise where we are. Drop it down in the chat box with lifted hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the King. Hallelujah to the Father. We came to tell the Lord just how precious he is in our lives and how much we love him. And we just want to lift our voice to him this morning. Be pleased by our worship this morning, Father. Thank you for your presence, God. Father, 
how we love you, Father, this morning. Oh, how we adore you, Father. Oh, how we lift up our name and your name and our voices to you on this morning, God. Holy Spirit, we implore you right where we stand, Father. We thank you. Thank you for your love for us, Father. And in response, we're going to love on you this morning, God. We came to lift up your name, bless your name. Bless the Lord, O oh, our souls, and all that is not just some of it, God, but all that is within us this morning, God. So we lift our hands and we speak well of you this Sunday morning, God. And as we worship you in this service, God, we ask you that we remember that prayer, that prayer that you taught your disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. Come on, shout it out one more time. Say, expect, expect the great, the great blessing. blessing now. Oh, I know you know it. Shout it out. Expect the great, the great blessing. Your voice and say, it's on you. Declare it and say, it's on you. Expect, expect the great, the great blessing. blessing. The blessing, the blessing is on you. Oh, you, you, you. Hallelujah. The blessing is all over you, and you look good being blessed. Amen. 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 If you are joining us for the first time, please drop that down in the chat box. Let us know exactly where you're joining us from. We do have some social influencers that are waiting to meet you there, to greet you and welcome you here at Six Mount Zion Baptist Temple. If you're back with us and if you're new as well, we want you to like, share, and comment. Start a watch party if you can. Also, if you're over on YouTube, we didn't forget about you either. Like and subscribe. You got to subscribe to the channel first. Share with a family member or a friend and we can show you everything that's going on here. We have social influencers waiting for you there as well in, on our YouTube channel. If you want to know more about what's going on here at the temple, stay tuned. Announcements are coming to you right now. Good morning and welcome to our Sunday morning service. We are praying for more in 2024. I am Joanne Lewis Nixon and here's what's happening at the temple. Six House Incorporated is partnering with Vita for the upcoming 2024 tax season. Tax season begins February the 14th through April the 13th. We are now accepting appointments. You must make no more than $65,000 a year. Drop-off hours are Tuesdays and Thursdays only from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Please contact the Six House at 757-244-6100 for further information. The ESI Educational Consultants, LLC, along with Community Speaks Consulting, LLC, is sponsoring their annual college trip to Virginia State University on Wednesday, April the 3rd from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. This is open to all 9th through 12th grade students. Parental permission is required. Excellent attitude and behavior is expected. The cost is only $25 per student. Transportation, breakfast, lunch, and snacks will be provided. We will meet and leave from Target parking lot in Hampton at 9 a.m. sharp. 
To sign up and for more information, contact your school counselor or Mr. Eric Harrison at 757-342-9027 or by email at noop14 at Verizon Net. The deadline to sign up is March the 15th, so don't miss out. Are you getting ready for a celebration of love, wedding decor, and great savings? We invite you to join us at the Wedding Resale Event, a shopping experience where wedding dreams come true without breaking the bank. It will be held on Saturday, March the 16th in the Stream Center. General shopping from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., but VIP early access will get in at 10.30 a.m. There will be a bridal bargains galore from centerpieces to gowns and a silent auction for brand new gowns and all proceeds will be donated to the SMZBT Stream Center. Sellers can declutter their closets and turn your wedding treasures into cash. Tell a friend who needs to know. Mark your calendar and get ready for an unforgettable day of shopping and excitement. If you are interested in selling or donating good condition wedding items, contact Tammy Mills with Simply Grand Events at 757-344-9091. See you there on Saturday, March the 16th. The Hallelujah Hands of Praise will have a silent dinner on Tuesday, March the 19th at 6.30 p.m. in the SMZBT Chapel. Tickets are on sale for only $5. Come and spend an evening with our deaf and hard of hearing family. Get a delicious dinner, learn how to sign, games, and much more. You can get your ticket from Minister Leader Kenyatta Fox and Tanya Cross in the back foyer or call the church office at 757-896-6050 for more details. All are welcome. Good morning, Six Mel Zion Baptist Temple. Here's Miss Yvette saying thank you. Thank you, Pastor, for supporting the One City Marathon. Thank you to all the congregation members who showed up in inclement weather, but we showed out. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. And on behalf of the City of Newport News, we say thank you for finishing strong. That's all for now. Stay connected to our social media and church app for further updates and or changes. And until the next time, stay blessed. Praise God. Amen. All of the wonderful opportunities God has for us to serve and to be a blessing. Make special note of all of those great opportunities. We're going to pray this morning. And as we prepare to pray, we're going to show you all the ways that we give uh, we give by way of Givelify. Uh, we also give by way of Cash App. And our cash tag is dollar sign SMZBT Give. You can write out the check and drop it in the mail. 3100 Butternut Drive in the city of Hampton, 23666. Or you can bring it by. Our church offices are open Tuesday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And know that uh, it is a tremendous blessing, amen, as we are, as he is with us, consistent, and we are doing as God has called us to do. So in this month of March, as we're praying, uh, thank God that we are able to walk with God. And I'm so glad to let you know that this week of the Lenten journey is our walk in love. Uh, that a walk with God is yes a walk in the light but it's also a great walk in love so my prayer for you um, as you are uh, aware that you've awakened to a new day is that you'll make the declaration for the month of march i'm blessed i'm whole and i walk with god and then at 7 14 a.m and p.m uh, you'll uh, make the declaration as a prayer, Lord, order my steps. Lord, order my steps. So let's pray. God, thank you this morning uh, that we are able to make incremental progress as we walk each and every day closer to you. Um, thank you for this great walk that you call us to. Uh, and this week, it's a walk in love. Uh, may we, oh God, from the love we have received from you. Uh, walk in love with all of those you put around us. Uh, 
help that to be uh, the meter and the beat of the pace of our lives is that we'll walk in love that we will love you first of all with all of our hearts soul all of our mind all of our strength and that we will love our neighbor as we love ourselves help us to live each day in love we pray in Jesus name amen and amen well it's giving time it's giving time grab those devices hold them in your hand let's lift them up before the Lord father we thank you this morning for this great time we have uh, in this awesome way in which you teach us uh, to be a blessing as we are blessed thank you for loving us uh, now God it's in that same heart that we express love to you and to others that we bring the portion that you've asked for I pray God you'd bless the tithe and the offering beside uh, bless God both gift and giver in Jesus name and everybody shout God is my source preaching time preaching time and we do have a word from you coming from pastor barber he will be coming from luke 19 verses 7 through 10 and we're doing this keep it 100 series and today he will be speaking to us about keeping it 100 the comeback All right. keeping it 100 the comeback if you're ready for the word drop down in the chat box say i'm ready for the word as we prepare to sing this morning We've been having a theme about blessing the Lord all morning, and we're not just going to stop there. We're just going to say we're going to bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually, not just sometimes, his praise shall continually be in our mouths. Come on and clap your hands wherever you are. I know the tune sounds familiar, but we're going to say, I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. He is good. If you know that he's good, I need you to sing that with us this morning. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. He is good. Not just some of the time. We said all of the time. Said I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. He is good. Oh, come on and sing it like you mean it. Wherever you are, just say. I will bless the Lord at all times. For He's good. He's good. This morning, as we lift up this song against you, say, I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. He is good. I don't know about you, but it feels good to give God some praise on this morning. Say, I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. He is good. Oh, don't be ashamed to 
moved a little bit this morning, just say, I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord and all oh, he's good, yeah. He's good. He's been real, 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 real good. Say, I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. He's good. He's been real, 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 real good. Hallelujah. If you believe it, just lift it up with us. Let's be saying, He in your Bible to Luke the 19th chapter, Luke 19. Uh, we'll begin reading at verse number 7 from the Passion Translation. It reads just like this. As Jesus left to go with Zacchaeus, many in the crowd complained. Look at this. Of all the people to have dinner with, he's going to eat in the house of a crook. Zacchaeus joyously welcomed Jesus and was amazed over his gracious visit to his home. Zacchaeus stood in front of the Lord and said, Half of all that I own, I will give to the poor. And the Lord, and Lord, if I have cheated anyone, I promise to pay back four times as much as I stole. Verse 9, Jesus said to him, this shows that today life has come to you and your household, for you are a true son of Abraham. 
The Son of Man has come to seek out and to give life to those who are lost. Uh, God, we thank you for this word. Uh, we pray preaching power, spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us this morning, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Uh, here, here we are on this Lenten journey, and I pray that it has been a great walk for you. Uh, once again, um, and by now, people have stopped asking the question, uh, but if everybody asks you what I'm giving up for Lent, tell them we're not giving up. We are living up. We're living up. Uh, this Jericho to Jerusalem, these strategic places, the significant people that Jesus encountered. Uh, it was truly a path of pain. Um, even when he got to Jerusalem, we'll find on Palm Sunday that he, he did what he only did a couple of other times. He wept. Uh, when he saw the city, uh, when he saw uh, the confusion of the city, uh, it was truly a path of pain. What lied before him uh, was a betrayal and uh, a scourging and uh, even uh, a crucifixion. But uh, in the midst of all of this, as these last few days of his earthly ministry, um, he didn't focus on the pain of the path. Uh, but every encounter that he had was an encounter uh, and gave the person in the encounter a plea for authenticity. A plea for authenticity. Uh, and, and when we look at this story today of Zacchaeus, we see a man uh, uh, who was caught in a life of failures, of, of major setbacks. See, listen, life has setbacks. They are moments, they're detours and delays. Uh, they're disappointments, things out of our control. Uh, we all experience setbacks of our dreams and our hopes and our desires. Uh, these unexpected, without notice, unplanned and unanticipated uh, setbacks of life. Moses will tell you he was on track to be a uh, leader in in Pharaoh's home, he was educated in, 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 in Pharaoh's home. He was being groomed to be uh, the next leader, but then he had a setback and ended up uh, in the wilderness. David was anointed to be king, uh, even as a teenager, but he had the setback of Saul and running for his life. And so setbacks do happen, but I want you to know, uh, amen, when we uh, keep it 100 with God, even in our failed moments, God orchestrates comebacks. God orchestrates comebacks. There's, there's no greater story uh, than the story of, of comebacks, especially in sports and football. Uh, one of the greatest comebacks, the largest comebacks, happened uh, just a few years ago in 2022 where the Minnesota Vikings... Uh, we're able to overcome a third quarter deficit of 33 to nothing. Uh, the Indianapolis Colts had them down 33 to nothing in the third quarter. But they came storming back and were able to beat those Colts in overtime 39 36. It became uh, one of the greatest comebacks in NFL history, the largest point span, or even in basketball, where uh, their fourth quarter comeback. Uh, in 1977, uh, where the Milwaukee Bucks were down 28 points, and they were able to erase uh, that 28-point deficit in the fourth quarter uh, to beat the Atlanta Hawks. And so what we see in this text is, is uh, Zacchaeus, uh, who lived a life and had abused his position and and was seen uh, as a criminal, as a crook uh, amongst uh, the people in his community. He had a major setback in his life. He's only seen here uh, in the Bible, in this text. He was a tax collector. Uh, 
Um, he uh, exploited others. Um, tax collectors were hated, but even in the midst of the hatred of tax collectors, he also exploited individuals that even in the taxes, he would add a little bit more and pocket it in his own pocket. And uh, he was hated by the community. It was seen as a total disappointment. But the Bible tells us uh, that he had an encounter with Jesus himself uh, because we can keep it 100 even when it's our fault that we failed uh, we can keep it 100 because of this listen number one God turns disappointments into divine appointments he has a way he orchestrates comebacks because he can turn disappointments into divine appointments. Verse number five says these words. When Jesus got to that place, he looked up in the tree and said, Zacchaeus, hurry down for, listen, I am appointed to stay at your house today. I'm appointed to stay at your house today. Uh, Zacchaeus is up in a tree. We'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. He's up in this tree and Jesus notices him, looks at him. Let me tell you, uh, last week we talked about a blind Bartimaeus who caught Jesus' attention uh, based upon the hollering that he was doing from what he heard. Here, Zacchaeus is not saying a word. He's just up in this tree. And Jesus sees him up in this sycamore tree and makes this declaration, uh, even in your disappointed situation of your life this is now a divine appointment he says I'm appointed uh, to stay at your house because God has a way of turning disappointments into divine appointments I need you to drop that right down in the chat box that enemy might make you try to force you to look at the disappointments of your life. And I'm telling you, all they are are just setups for God's divine appointments in your life. That widow uh, and the prophet Elijah, you remember back in 1 Kings, the 17th chapter, God speaks to Elijah before he even meets the widow. And he says to Elijah, arise, get thee to Seraphim. That's 1 Kings 17 and 9, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Check it out. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain you. This widow woman had no idea. She's in the midst of the disappointments of her life. Uh, when the prophet meets her, he challenges her. Uh, amen. And she even makes the declaration. She gives him the assessment of her current situation. She says, uh, all I have is just a little bit of meal and a little bit of oil. I'm going to make a cake for me and my son. And then she pronounces death over the two of them. She says, we're going to eat this cake and we're going to die. And the Bible says that Elijah tells her, because it's a divine appointment, uh, God had already spoken to Elijah and said, this widow woman is going to sustain you. Only God could do that. Here, this widow woman couldn't even sustain herself. But God had already set it up uh, to where she would meet Elijah. And she would be the one to not only sustain him, but sustain her and her child. Because God turns disappointments up into divine appointments. She had pronounced death over her own life. Up. But God, the Bible goes on to say in 1 Kings the 17th chapter, check it out for yourself, that every time she went to that barrel, she had just enough to make another cake. As a matter of fact, uh, that barrel that seemed to be empty uh, kept her going for over three years because God has a way of turning disappointments into divine appointments. I need you to drop it in the chat box. Uh, divine appointment. We're not going to look at the disappointments. Uh, we're going to celebrate the divine uh, appointments. Every place uh, you think you don't have enough, uh, when you meet with God in that divine appointment, uh, he will give you more uh, than uh, enough. He has a way uh, of turning disappointments into divine appointments. I'm trying 
trying to move, but I got to stay here. Moses ends up in a wilderness. And there in that wilderness, God speaks to him from a burning bush because God had an assignment for Moses and it wasn't to wander around in the wilderness. It was to go back to a place of disappointment and failure and lead the children of Israel out of bondage. And God speaks to him from a burning bush. God finds him in that wilderness where he thought he was all by himself uh, and God turns a disappointment uh, into a divine uh, appointment. I'm praying over each and every one, uh, praying with each and every one of you uh, that God will show you uh, the divine appointment uh, in the midst of your disappointments. Uh, Isaiah put it best when he writes in Isaiah 43 verse number two from the New International Version, when you pass through the water, I'll be with you. What that tells me uh, is that the waters uh, could be considered as a place of overwhelming disappointments. Uh, but God says in the midst of the waters, uh, there's a divine appointment. I'll be with you. Listen to the rest of it. When you pass through the rivers, uh, they will not sweep you over. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze because I am with you. When you keep it 100, even in your failures, God turns disappointments into a divine appointment. Secondly, amen, when we keep it 100, even in the midst of our disappointments, you'll realize this, your situation can be bigger than your expectation. I love it. Your situation can't be bigger uh, than your expectation. This is still a year uh, of expectation for us. Uh, and sometimes uh, the situation uh, can take your expectation away. Uh, uh, but when you keep it 100, uh, uh, your situation can never be bigger uh, than your expectation. Verse number three, says these words, as Jesus made his way through the city, Zacchaeus was eager to see Jesus. That's expectation. He kept trying to get a look at him, but the crowd was around Jesus was massive. Zacchaeus was a very short man and couldn't see over the heads uh, of the people. So the Torah goes on to say uh, that what he does is he climbs up into a tree uh, because he refused uh, to let his situation uh, be bigger than his expectation. I feel the Lord coming through, amen, about to rest on your porch right now uh, because there are many of us that have allowed our situation uh, to take our expectation away. Uh, but God uh, is a God uh, that'll help you uh, Push through uh, uh, your situation uh, because you've got a stronger expectation. Uh, amen. I'm declaring and believing uh, that God will take you from expecting less uh, to experiencing more. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on to that. Uh, that's a word for you. A amen. You may have uh, gotten to a place uh, uh, where you've allowed your situation uh, to cause you to just expect whatever comes uh, but my God is able, uh, and I'm telling you uh, that God's going to take you from expecting less uh, to experiencing uh, more. This big crowd in front of him, uh, his short statue, uh, amen, he could have just said, well, that's it. Uh, I can't get my uh, wish. I'm going to go back home. But he just did whatever he could possibly do uh, because he would not let his situ situation Take away his expectation, even when the crowd uh, was in front of him, uh, the expectation got greater. Even uh, uh, as he got up in the tree, uh, the expectation was yet stronger. And I don't know where you may feel like you're coming up short uh, in your life. I don't know uh, uh, where you may feel like uh, uh, your, your, your situation is overwhelming. Uh, uh, I don't know where you're feeling like uh, things in your life, uh, uh, amen, 
are keeping you from getting the desires that you have uh, for the Lord. All he wanted to do uh, was he just wanted to see Jesus. Uh, that's all he wanted to do. Uh, that's all his desire was, was to see Jesus. Uh, amen. And he wouldn't let uh, his past, uh, he wouldn't let his pains, uh, he wouldn't let his problems, uh, he wouldn't let his short statue, uh, he wouldn't even let the opinions of others uh, keep him uh, from seeing Jesus. Uh, I, I, I love this story. I love it. I love it uh, because in the whole crowd, as Jesus is headed to Jerusalem, this young man Zacchaeus up in this tree caught his attention. And in the whole crowd, he singles him out and tells him this, today I'm coming to your house. Woo. All he wanted was just to catch a glimpse of the Lord. And instead of just getting a glimpse, he got a visitor. Because his expectation pushed him past his situation. You got to keep it 100. Got to keep it 100. He's outmatched. He's outnumbered. It's insurmountable. But his expectation uh, pushed him uh, Pass his situation up. And that's what I'm sharing with you. Amen. Uh, Zacchaeus went from expecting less, just a glimpse of the Lord. He goes from expecting less to experiencing more. Do you see that? All he wanted was to get a glimpse of Jesus. All he wanted to do was see him. And the Bible says, that expectation pushed him to a place where he was able to see him. But then his expectation so overrode his situation that God took him from a place of expecting less to experiencing more. My prayer for you this morning is that you will experience the best of what God has for you. Uh, you'll experience God's best. Uh, when folks say that you're not worthy, you'll experience God's best. When you don't think you can uh, measure up, you'll experience God's best. Uh, when others have opinions about you, you'll experience God's best. Uh, when even your past begins to haunt you, uh, I'm praying this year uh, that God will move you from expecting uh, less to experiencing the most God has for you. His expectations caused him to climb up in a tree and he kept it 100 because God took him from expecting less to experiencing uh, more. Your situation can never be bigger than your expectation. Finally this morning, uh, Zacchaeus and this encounter that he has with the Lord teaches us one powerful thing when you keep it 100 with the Lord God has the final say come on drop that right in the chat box right now God has uh, the final say uh, the Bible says in verse number nine uh, Jesus said to him this shows that today life has come to you and your household for you are a true son of Abraham. The son of man has come to seek out and to give life to those who are lost. Uh, now remember, that's verse 9 and verse number 10. Remember back in verse 7, what they said to him, they can't believe that Jesus is going to the house of a, a sinner. One translation says, another says a crook. I told you. I told you he had been exploiting the people because of his position. He had padded his own pockets. But the Bible says that just one visit with the Lord, my God, just one visit with the Lord. This does not say uh, that Jesus confronted him about his past, but he was just in the presence of the Lord when Jesus showed up in his house. God, the Bible says... He was so amazed over the, the visit that he was having with the Lord that Zacchaeus stands up in front of the Lord and says this, half of all that I own, verse number eight, it's right there, I will give to the poor. A and Lord, if I cheated anyone, now you know you cheated. <laughs> if I cheated anyone, 
I promise to pay back four times as much as I stole. He, he, he says, I'm going to give half of my possessions to the poor. I'm going to pay, repay fourfold anyone I've cheated. What a great act of repentance and restitution. Uh, here many people have written Zacchaeus off and thought that he was done, uh, that, that, that God wouldn't even consider that Jesus wouldn't come to a house like that. They said he was a crook, uh, but the Bible says uh, that he has a genuine change of heart uh, and makes a commitment to righteously serving God uh, because no matter what your situation is, uh, no matter how far you may feel you have gone or others think you have gone, uh, God still has uh, the last say over you. When you keep it 100, uh, God has the last say uh, over your life. Your circumstances may say a lot. Your setbacks may say a lot about you. Uh, uh, amen. Uh, uh, Satan may even accuse you. Uh, uh, but I came to tell you that God has uh, the final say. They called him a crook uh, uh, in verse number 8. But Jesus calls him the son of Abraham uh, in verse number 9. Uh, because God has uh, the final. Come on, drop it in the chat box. Final say. God has uh, the final say. Others uh, may have said he was a sinner, but God says uh, he's a son of Abraham. Uh, others may have said uh, he's finished, uh, uh, but Jesus says it's only just begun. Uh, others may have said he's worthless, uh, but Jesus says there's value in him. Uh, amen. Don't you dare uh, uh, let a setback speak louder uh, uh, than the voice of the God that made you. Don't you dare uh, let circumstances speak louder uh, than the voice of the God who made you. Don't you dare let others' uh, opinion of you keep you from the best God has uh, for you. I came to let you know uh, that you may have experienced a setback, uh, but your comeback will be always greater uh, than any setback uh, because God uh, has uh, uh, the final uh, say. Isaiah 61 and 3 puts it best. It says, to all who mourn in Israel, he'll give you beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, uh, uh, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Uh, that's the promise uh, uh, that he has. He says uh, in the Living Bible, for God has planted you like a strong uh, and graceful oak uh, in all of his own, uh, uh, for his own glory. God uh, has the final say, not what people say, uh, but what God says. Not what Satan accuses, uh, but what God says. Uh, not what our circumstances and situations uh, may do to us, but God has uh, the final say. When you keep it 100, uh, at places of failure, God turns disappointments into divine appointments. When you keep it 100, at places of failure, your situation can never be bigger than your expectation. He'll take you from expecting less to experiencing greater. And finally, uh, when failure hits and setbacks are real, you better know it. God has the final say. Let's pray. Father, thank you, thank you, thank you that as we continue to walk in the light, as we continue to walk with you. You change, oh God. You bring light to dark moments. You cause disappointments to be divine appointments. May God, each and every person that's listening this morning, have a divine appointment with you. I pray blessings as you call us out of darkness into your marvelous light. To stand as a blessed people, as a whole people, and as a people that will walk with you. Help us to walk with you each and every day of our lives, we pray. God, order our steps in your work and in your will. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Listen, there's a number that appears on the screen. Please call that number. Someone will reach out to you. 
Uh, we are here for you and we're believing God for the best for each and every one. God has the final say. My prayer for you this week is that you will be blessed and know you're blessed. You'll experience the wholeness of God. Uh, that you will cause expectation to override your situation and that you will walk with a God who has the final say over your life. God bless you. God keep you strong. God keep you pressing forward. God help you to keep it 100 as we walk with God each and every day. We love you here at Six Mount Zion Baptist Temple.